Okay, easy. There, stay. Good. Oh. Today we'll show you how not to ice skate. Yep. Oh, stretch. Okay, good. What's this? So, oh, uh, oh. And we'll meet a genuine prospector. Okay, or a cutter, or a cutter up, cutter up, cutter up, pull it away. Okay, and oh, there's a tea. And snip, 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 snip. Oh, get around. Look. We'll see people who eat bugs. It looks like a beard, okay. Broken pencil, but it's okay. And we'll sample food that's impossible to eat. Yeah, ta-da! It's out of control. And now here's your host, the man of the hour, the man with the power, one of the brightest stars in the Hollywood galaxy, Dave Coulier. Hello, friends. You know, we all enjoy the tasty goodness of a fine roasted nut, but we don't enjoy the frustration of getting the delicious nut meat out of the shell. You've tried your fingers, you've tried your teeth, you've tried can openers. Throw them all away, friends, because now you don't have to be a squirrel to enjoy tasty nutty goodness anytime. With the amazing new Gravity Nutcracker. No cords, no batteries, no buttons to push. The amazing Gravity Nutcracker minces and pinches, it mashes and smashes, and it really, really works. Fern, what are you doing? I'm doing the commercial. Well, Hearn, you don't do commercials, you're a reporter. I know, but I want to get rich quick, Dave. Why, don't we pay you enough here? <laughs> you couldn't possibly pay me what I'm worth. But if you want to give me a raise... Sorry, out of the question. We can't afford to give you a raise. Well, okay then. Buy the amazing Gravity Nutcracker, folks. Hearn, <laughs> Gravity Nutcracker, this is a hammer. Shh, don't tell them that. Oh, what are you selling this thing for? It's an absolute steal, Dave. Oh, I bet. How much? Ninety-three zillion dollars. Ninety-three zillion dollars? Hearn, isn't that a little overpriced? All right, all right. I'll come down to ninety-two fifty. I'm not greedy. It's this way, see? I only have to sell one, and then I'm set for life. Well, why don't you put the nuts in your pouch and go and hibernate somewhere, Hearn? Hibernate, Dave? I'm not a bear. I'm a businessman. Well, put the gravity nutcracker away before you hit yourself in the head with it, okay? Oh, all right. Go on, get out of here. Find something else to sell. I don't believe that guy. You know, a lot of animals hibernate in the winter, but if you don't feel like sleeping your winter away, you should probably get out and enjoy some winter sports, like ice skating. It's easy and it's fun, and I'll show you how. One of life's little pleasures is ice skating. But it helps to remember what ice is. It's water with a bad cold. But a good ice skater shows his mastery over the frozen elements. Grace in Motion, a ballet of body poetry and movement. But even if you're a beginning ice skater, you can still keep up with the gang if you follow these simple rules. Always be friendly and courteous to your fellow skaters. Start simply. Don't try to do ice skating tricks you can't do. Don't be afraid to give yourself some help if you need it. Remember, the main object of skating is to keep from falling down. Practice makes perfect. If at first you don't succeed, try and try again. And before you know it, you too will be skating like a pro. Well, I bet you folks didn't know I was such an athlete, huh? Dave! Dave, are you all right? I saw what happened over there. I was worried. I didn't know what this. the heck happened. Oh, calm down. Look, I've even got athletes' feet. <laughs> she froze me out. Say hey, you. <laughs> Adult education, where kids are the teachers and adults are there to learn. Hello, class. Hello, teacher. Everyone do their homework? Oh. Oh. Cool it. This class doesn't have any homework. I was just testing you. But what do you do if you show up in class without your homework? Confess you made a mistake and offered to do extra work? Are you crazy? If you don't show up with your homework, you have to make up a good excuse. Isn't that kind of like cheating? You do your homework to make you think fast and be smart, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you want to think fast, then think of excuses. Okay, so you've got your homework. Give me an excuse. It was stolen. Okay, that's a good start. My, my dog ate it. That's an old excuse. That excuse is older than me. That excuse is older than you. I'm gonna do my reading homework. 
but I ate supper, and then I got food poisoning, and then and, 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 and amnesia. What? Temporary amnesia. Well, why didn't you go to the doctor? Well, I forgot who he was, and I tried to call, but I couldn't find the phone. And I tried to do my homework, but I forgot how to read, and I forgot who I am, and I'm just glad I woke up this morning. Okay. <laughs> now you're thinking. Well, I hope you've grown up to learn something from that. And now it's contest time. Well, what do you say we get this contest underway? Psst. Hey, folks. Oh, not again. Just send me a check or money order for $7 trillion, and you can get this wonderful machine. It buzzes and whirs and spins, and it sends off big clouds of smelly smoke. Ern. <coughs> Ern, what is that thing good for? Uh, good for? Why, uh, it, uh, it, uh, spins and it whizzes and, and it smokes. Yeah, but what does it do? Do? I don't know. Send me $7 trillion and find out. Hearn, give me back my invention. It's not finished, and it's not for sale. Oh, settle down, Waldo. Don't blow a gasket. <laughs> it's contest time, Hearn. How did I do that? Well, today's contest is called Guess How Many. Hearn, why don't you make yourself useful and bring that jar in here? Oh, Dave, you're really not paying me enough. <laughs> you're not getting a raise, Hearn. Yeah. <laughs> today's contest is called Guess How Many Worms There Are in the Jar. Now, what you do is you count the number of worms in the jar, and the person who's closest is the winner. Now, we're going to set this down and get a nice close-up for you. Take a look. Hello again, folks. Let me tell you about the best bargain you'll ever see in your life. For $25, that's right, just $25, you can get the wonderful pocket paper shredder. That's right. It really, really works. With a simple flick of the wrist... And you can see for yourself, this ordinary envelope is in shreds. Okay, time's up. How many worms are there in the jar? Let's see, Cindy and Schenectady, 375. Good guess, okay. Let's see, Jimmy and Moose Jaw, 200. Uh, it looks like there could be that many in there. Okay. All right, Sally in Peculiar, Missouri. A jillion. Oh, Sally, you're a knucklehead. Get out of here. Cut it out. Okay, now it's time to find out how many there are in the jar. Can I have the envelope, please? The, uh, the envelope, Dave? Yeah, the envelope that's going to tell us how many worms there are in the jar, Hearn. Would that be this envelope, Dave? Oh, Hearn. Now I'm going to have to count all the worms in the jar so we know who won the contest. Well, if you'd give me a raise, none One. of this would have happened. Speaking of ways to, to, to make a lot of money, you know, there's a lot of get-rich-quick ideas, and this next story is about a guy who has some get-rich-quick ideas of his own. Three. Sorry that had to happen, Dave. Yeah, I'll bet you are, huh? Four. <laughs> Ugh. Oh. <laughs> ah, the lonesome sands, the wild cactus, the vast emptiness of the great American desert. Uh, that's desert, not dessert. Come on, Marty. Come on, hun. We got a lot of work for us to do. What's this? Why, it's an old prospector and his faithful mule. Marty, it's too hot out here for my inner beast. Howdy, old timer. Well, howdy. I don't remember seeing you folks in these parts. Uh, we don't get visitors up here often, but uh, I'm glad you could make it. You know, I've been mining these hills since, uh, 83, I believe it was. 1983? No, 1883, you varmint. Well, is there any gold out here? Gold in these hills? Well, uh, let me tell you something. Let me show you something. I've been out since this morning, and let me just give you a look at what I done got. Come on, Marty. Let's learn these kids how to find this gold. Hey, hey, come on. Uh, hey, hey, come on. I want to break. Come on, come on, come on. Hey. Gold? Why, heavens, yes. There's still plenty of gold in these hills. You spend as much time in the desert as Marty and I, you get to read the signs that nature leaves that other folks wouldn't even see. Come on, Marty. Is this the way? I feel it in my bones. Come on, it's the other way, the signs. Go down. Come on. You know, it's a tough life out here in the desert. Many times you thirst for water. Many times you thirst for companionship. And many times your companion thirsts for water. And if you listen close enough, why, 
you can almost hear the ocean. Now, I pan for gold the same way as my pappy and my grandpappy, but being honest with you, I don't like to squat in the dirt any better than the next man, so at least I'd do it. Now, looky here. I'd do it where it's comfortable. I'm no fool. There, now, see, this is easy. This is just as easy as it can be. All you got to do is stack them up right over here. Ain't no problem with that. Simple. Now, there are other places to find gold, you understand? There's banks, uh, Swiss banks in many instances. There are uh, jewelry stores and, of course, your local dance office. And that's right out there. Hey, 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 hey. As you've learned, some parts about mining for gold are easy. Some parts are very hard. Now, to be truthful with you, the hardest part is after 50 years on my knees with a pan in my hand, is standing up again. Spend the rest of my dang life like this, and it hurts, I tell you, like a bit. Come on, Ma. Come on, baby. Come on, honey. 112, ooh. 113, 14. Uh, hi, we're back. A one. Borrow some of your worms, Dave? Nah. <laughs> oh, you keep doing this. One, one fifteen? Uh, and we'll be right back. One sixteen? Heads I win, tails you lose. <laughs> Three twenty three, three twenty four, three twenty five. Dave, I'm getting everything together. I'm really working hard in that hot news story. Oh, great, Angela. Three twenty six. Uh, but there's something I need to know. How many days are in the year? Three hundred sixty five or three sixty six? Uh, three sixty five. Three twenty seven. And uh, how many days are there in February? Twenty eight. Three twenty eight. I thought that was twenty nine. Uh, that's leap year. 327. Oh, I already said that. Oh, by the way, three of us had 20 of those little shrimps yesterday for lunch. Oh, thanks for telling us about that place. It was great. 320, great. And it only cost 3268 for the three of us. Oh. 3820. Oh, what's the use? Never mind. Look, it's time for a let's eat, but to tell you the truth, the idea of eating right now kind of makes me a little sick, so I'll start over on the count and... You watch this, it's a story about food. Well, it's, it's sort of like food. <laughs> You're traveling through another dimension. One of not only sight and sound, but of food. What's real and what's not. Do you ever wonder where artificial food comes from? The stuff you see in department stores or in restaurant display cases, well, it's made right here at Iwasaki Images of America. And today we're here with the executive vice president, Mr. Harry Fujita. Harry, welcome to Out of Control. Thank you. Harry, why do you make this food? Restaurants, they use our display food to show people exactly what you are serving. You don't have to walk over to somebody else's table and look at their plate. That's right. This stuff all looks so real, you can't tell the difference. Hey, this is great. Look at this, a little Carmen Miranda hat. <laughs> all right, they even have Pac-Man cakes. <laughs> what else do we have? A huge apple. You put this on your teacher's desk, you get A's for a year. <laughs> I am from the planet of the Coneheads. <laughs> you know, Harry, I have no beef. This stuff all looks incredibly real. Beef? <laughs> Harry, how exactly do they make this food? This is the mold and put it into the bake in the ba uh, oven. It goes into the oven. oven. After bake it, it becomes hot. Now he's going to show you uh, the broth of cheese. Okay. With the magnet in it. With the magnet in it. There you go, cheese. Uh, he's making now expensive looking fruit cocktail. About halfway done now. Ooh, that does look expensive. <laughs> now, what you got here? Uh, this is the uh, lettuce tie to keep the things in the refrigerator. Oh, it's a safe. So you can put things in there and hide them. Now, it's called lettuce hide. I guess that'd be made from uh, cows made from lettuce. <laughs> what are you holding here, Harry? This is the mold for the piece of the beef. 
Oh, so this is the mold for the beef, whereas this looks like moldy beef. <laughs> Cantaloupe, candy, oranges, bananas, uh, even sitting this close, Harry, you can't tell the difference. Well, why don't you try it? Okay, let's try the taste test. Uh, crackers. Okay, why don't we try? I'm gonna go for this one right here. <laughs> okay. Okay. How about a piece of cheese? All right. Oh no, it's wrong again. Oh, wrong again. Well, you know, I think I'm gonna take a glass of milk and wash all this stuff down. All right. Milk dud. You got me again. <laughs> well, Harry, this has certainly been an educational experience for all of us, and we'd like to uh, give you this out of control. Let's not eat award for having the most realistic food. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I got one for you. Guess how many jokes there are in this show. You got it? None! <laughs> you know, I really can't face the idea of having to count these worms all over again. The comedy computer. Why didn't I think of that before? Computers can count anything, right? Forget it, Dave. Did you hear the one about... Oh, come on. It'll just take a few minutes. I hate worms. Please. To tell you the truth, I can't even count worms. But I thought you could count anything. Ugh, anything but worms. I can't make heads or tails of them. Oh, great help you are. Dave, Dave, look. If you're not going to give me a raise, let me at least do a food story. You always do the food stories. I never get to do a food story. Mm-hmm. One... Two. Hey, wait a minute, Dave. That one's cut in two. That means it's only one worm. No, it's two worms. Are you sure? Positive. What number was I on? Uh, I wasn't paying attention. Look, Hearn, you want a great food story? Yeah. Okay. Here's a great food story for you. Great. It's, it's a probably true about food. It is? It's the best story you'll ever cover, Hearn. Thanks, Dave. Oh, boy. A food story. I love food stories. I love food musicals. I love everything about food. <laughs> What's worse than finding a worm in an apple? Finding only half a worm. <laughs> From around the world, it's probably true. Hi. Uh, I'm looking for a place called Barbara's. Uh, you wouldn't happen to be able to help me, would you? This is the place. This is Barbara's? This is Barbara's. <laughs> Like one of those quaint, on-the-side-of-the-road places in Europe or something. So, uh, I understand that I'm supposed to have some kind of wild and exotic dinner here or something? Oh, you're eating with me tonight. Yeah. Oh, how nice. What's on the menu? I'm glad you could make it. We're having pizza with a hop. Uh-huh. And we're having chocolate chirpies. Chocolate chirpies and pizza with a hop. Sounds good. What's on pizza with a hop? Um, crickets? <laughs> crickets? Crickets? Crickets. So, uh, tell me, Barbara. In the name of honest journalism, why do you eat bugs? Because they're full of protein. They take all the food that they eat and turn it into usable stuff. Right. You can eat all that. The bad thing about this part, though, tonight is we're going to have to use these little critters while they're still alive. Would you like to try one? No. It tastes like worms. Oh, no. I'm not sure. I don't think it tastes like chicken. You're real good. Oh, great. You should really try one. Can you get a shot of this here? That's how they whistle. They don't like hot butter anymore. Oh. Hey, hey, no problem. Her and Barbara are not afraid of a worm, okay? okay then you can not afraid of worms. What, what are we doing now here, Barbara? Okay, I'm going to show you how to fix a cricket. I take the head off because I don't like the way it crunches in my teeth. Now, you have to take the legs off. Because if you don't take the legs off, uh -huh. these little bitty hairs that are down here will get caught in your intestines. Throat. And then that's just your little critter that's left in that. Uh-huh. Meal for king, huh? Definitely. I Definitely. can't eat this stuff. You can't eat this stuff. No, I'm a vegetarian. You're a veg. You know, there's nothing in the world as a pure vegetarian. Yeah. No matter what you eat, you're going to get some meat from insect products. Uh, they're strictly on Twinkies and milk. Friends of mine, ready to dig into this cricket pizza. Now, this is Kim. 
This is Brett, and this is Tony. Now, go ahead, dig in. Well, don't don't wait for me. Just go ahead. <laughs> What do you think, Brent? So good. Pretty good? <laughs> sure looks good, huh? Mmm, I'll bet. I hope you're not eating. Eat your own meal. Don't worry about me. <laughs> uh. I understand you had a wonderful dinner tonight. <laughs> You couldn't quite get into the pizza. Well, no. So I made some chocolate just for you. Oh, well. May I suggest that you eat it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess since you put it that way, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> now, isn't that simply delicious? <laughs> this stuff's not too bad. It's so good. I like this stuff. I knew he would. <laughs> bon appetit. Mmm, chocolate covered people. I prefer the crunchy ones. Oh. <laughs> hey, stop that. That's disgusting. 126. 127. Oh, I don't think I can do this anymore. Hey, Dave, how's it going, huh? Hey, what's the matter with Dave? I'll tell you what's the matter with Dave. Dave doesn't get enough exercise. Americans today are eating more and more and working out less and less. Sure, a good diet helps, but to really take off those pounds, you need the amazing new one piece of rope sizer You can jump rope with it. You can use it as a chest expander. You can lift with it. This is a limited offer, so send $1 million in check and money order to A me. million Turn dollars? That sounds like a good price. Why do you want so much money, Hern? Because Dave won't give me a raise. Oh, you want, like, a raise. Well, I can give you a raise. Waldo! Waldo! Whoa! Dave, what's the matter? Well, this, we had this contest to guess how many worms there are in that jar right there, and, well, Hearn cut up the envelope with the answer on it, and then I had to count the worms to let everyone know who won the contest. You mean this jar right here? Yeah. Well, that's an easy one. There's 567 worms. Are you sure? Well, sure, I'm sure. Well, how do you know that? Because I have a jar of worms just like this in my very own house. You have a jar of worms at home? Well, of course. Doesn't everybody? Uh, look, that's our show for today. I'm really glad you could make it here. And, well, join us next time for our next show when we... Go and watch an elephant who has really bad dentures in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and then we'll travel to Cleveland, Ohio to roast some marshmallows over the Cuyahoga River. So we'll see you next time. Oh, Dave, look at this one. It has a There. Oh, that's the end of me. <laughs> that Hearn guy doesn't know nothing about making money. You gotta invent something practical. Like something to end this show, for instance. <laughs>